Okay, hello, my name is Jessica Lopez and I'm going to start a video with sharing my screen so I can walk you through the process of um, creating tests inside Cognero. So the first thing we have to do is go to Syngage.com and sign in with our Syngage credentials. So if I click sign in in the top right, um, mine are usually automatically loaded. So once I start typing in my email address, it will give me my options for my sign-in names. Um, if not, you would just type in your email and your password. Once inside Cognero, you do have to find your book um, because each uh, book has its own set of Cognero uh, problems. So I went to my courses on the left-hand main menu side, and then I'm going to either select the calculus textbook or I can select the um, algebra and trig. So it's the same book, whether you're doing Cal 1, Cal 2, or Cal 3, it's all the same book. These just happen to be the previous courses that I've taught. Um, and then it's also the same book for the standalone versus the co-rec for 1414, and of course the um, pre-cal book. So in any one of these that have the images of the book that you want to select, um, that's what you're, where you're going to click on resources. If I wanted to create a test using this calculus book, then I would click the resources for any course that uses that calculus book. So because I think the new thing here for us is the algebra and trig book, I'm going to actually go into the resources for that text. Um, and then once you're in there, you have to scroll through and look at your instructor supplements. And under instructor supplements, you should see a link that says Cognero testing powered by Cognero for, and then it lists this specific title for this specific book. So I'm gonna click on launch and it's gonna open in a new window, this Cognero system. And so it's a lot like testing. Um, I have two books under mine, so you notice that both actually are in here once Cognero does open. So in essence, it really wouldn't matter whether I click launch from a calculus book or if I click launch from an algebra book. Just the fact that I got into Cognero will now allow me to create a test for either of those, um, from either of those two texts, okay? Um, so then I would go to create a new test and I would have to give it a test title. We'll just say um, 2412 quiz one, and then this is a test, okay? And so if I wanted to create a folder, I could. I have not created any folder, but I could just do test folder. And it will put create a folder and put this quiz that I'm about to create inside that folder. Um, and then you have three options. You can build the test with randomly selected questions, um, which I don't suggest. You could build the test with randomly selected questions with specific information, um, or you can just build an empty test. I like to build an empty test, but you can always play around with these options and see what becomes available and what you'll be able to do. So I'm gonna click finish. And then I'm gonna to go to my text and I'm gonna click the little uh, plus symbol there. And it, depending on which chapters I am creating this test for, I would go to any one of those chapters. And um, I clicked on pre-cal, so let's go down to, kind of contradicting myself here. First I said, we're gonna click on it because it's 1414 and then now I'm creating a pre-cal test. It doesn't matter, it's the same textbook and that's, the purpose of this video is just to show you where to get the questions from um, and whatnot. So let's go down a little bit further into, let's say the beginning of trigonometry. So I'm gonna click on this arrow, it pops up each of the sections. So it does um, organize it a lot like the book. And I'm just gonna start with 6.1. And then I'm going to select some questions. Now you can hover over the questions and it will show you um, like a preview of each question. So if I find some, I wanna change angles. Um, if I find some other things, let's see. And then once you create, you add, you know, notice I just dropped them over, I grabbed it. 
I clicked on it and then I held my my left keypad or my left mouse button and then drug it over and then released. Okay, and so then it adds these things in. Um, once you're all done, you're just gonna hit file and then you're going to hit either export to QTI and you wanna do QTI 1.2. This will create the zip file that you'll be allowed to upload into Canvas so that your test can be inside Canvas, okay? Um, you could also print to a PDF. You could print, print a single version or multiple versions. That way, if you're doing paper tests in class, you could do that as well. Um, it does automatically save. So if I just hit this X here, um, you'll know that when I go down to tests at the bottom on the left side, I go to my test, it should have a folder in there. Um, I don't see this folder. Let's see. Maybe it's in here in the folder. Trying to locate where the folder is that it placed. I guess it didn't create a folder for me. I asked it to create a folder, but it didn't do it. It just puts everything under my tests. Um, so what it may have done is it may have put um, a folder in my files somewhere. Okay, so once I locate the test, right, I'm just gonna verify that it actually saved everything. So I'm gonna right click it and then I'm gonna say open test. And so then you'll notice that it does still have my three questions that I've added on here. Um, what I want to also mention is if you do create um, multiple tests, and let's say you want to create or multiple quizzes, and you want to compile them, but only select certain problems from each of them, you can still do that here. What you would do is after or even before you've added your own quizzes problems over here, you would come over here and you would uh, scroll down. Um, let me move my little toolbar from Zoom out of the way. There we go. And so then these are the questions that are on the test. What I can do is I can right click on the test itself. And then what I wanna do is I wanna enable multi-select for this test. Now it took me a learning curve to figure out how to do this, but eventually I figured out how to do it. So on the test, you wanna copy some problems from you right click on that specific test, you click enable multi-select. And so what this will allow you to do, so you probably want to do, um, go through all of these problems here and look at all the little um, previews and then select however many you want to select. So let's say I chose these three to um, add to the test. Once you do that, you're gonna right click I like to right click on top of one of these um, that I selected, but you could right click on top of another one and it wouldn't matter. And what you're gonna click is you're gonna click add to existing test or set. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the three problems and add it to this pre -cal quiz that I've created. Um, and actually it, it doesn't do it automatically. Um, you have to select. So I'm gonna click all tests, my tests, and then I'm gonna pick the one that I have open. There it is. And okay. Now I'm gonna click done. And now it has added the other three problems. There were only three, um, now there's six. So we've got the angle problems and then now we have these factoring problems that I've added. So I just wanna go over those basics on how to create one um, and then how to use your old ones to uh, copy some of those problems that you've already selected and then create a new one. Another thing you can do is um, to go to questions and you can recalculate the algorithms. So it'll change the problems for each of these problems. Some of them don't have algorithmically generated stuff. So you definitely wanna double check that it did in fact change it. Um, and that's one of the things that I noticed is that it doesn't specify whether or not um, 
it is algorithmically generated. So if you do click on um, this button where it says recalculate all algorithms, you want to go verify. So see like number two never changes, it's always 18 degrees. So number two is not algorithmically generated. So if I were creating this quiz, I'd wanna go back to the section where I got that problem from and maybe go select a different problem for number two. So number two was find the complement. Um, and it did change it from the original. Maybe it just for some reason didn't change it again. So just verify that all of your algorithms do get recalculated. Okay, see, it did change it. That's just my point because I did have some problems um, when I was using the review to create the test. I copied all the problems over just like I showed you how to copy them from an, an existing um, assignment that you already have. Once I did that, I noticed that when I clicked to change the problems, um, some of them didn't change. So I had to go grab other problems that were very similar. Okay. Um, I think that's the end of it. So again, when you want to save this, you either save it to a PDF, single version or multiple versions. Um, and then you, if you want to save it to Canvas, you go to export QTI standard and then QTI 1.2. Um, maybe I should go through that process just so that um, in case anyone does not know how to do that. So let me go here. So I'm just going to follow through with the rest of the process. If you know how to upload a QTI file into um, Canvas, then you don't need to follow me anymore. But if not, I'm going to go ahead and go through it. I'm going to use, I wanted to use my calculus course from my QM training. There we go. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to settings. Then I'm going to go scroll down. Um, no, the course is not published. It's not letting me create tests. Hmm. I guess they closed my um, course. So I cannot add anything to this course. Okay, that's all right. We'll just do it. Um, I'll do it inside the curriculum and then I'll delete it once I'm finished, just so that it's not in there confusing anybody. So then we're gonna go down here to settings. And we'll go to copy or import course content. And it may be my, min, my view, and that might be why I see it a little bit different where everything's at the bottom. So I'm gonna click copy QTI file, and then I'm gonna click on choose file. And then we're going to locate that one. So I'm going to go to downloads because I believe that's where it went. Yes. So here's my QTI file. I'm going to hit open. And then you can select for it to be a new question bank. You could select an existing question bank. However you want to do it. I'm just going to say test quiz and then import. Once that is queued and it finished and it ends up being completed, I should be able to go to my quizzes and locate that um, quiz that we just created. Once I verify that it's in there and I go take a look at what it looks like, um, then we are all done with this video. And then personally, I'm going to delete it before anyone else sees it. So here it is. So we're gonna go click it. Right now it's unpublished. 
I just want to preview it to see what it looks like. You can always edit the settings, the instructions, whatever you've got to edit. Um, and there it has the three angle problems and it has the three um, factoring problems. So everything is all there. So I'm gonna go to the top and I'm gonna delete this just because I don't want it in the curriculum. It was just a test. Oh, my launching tools. Okay, delete that. But now you have the, the gist of how to add a QTI file inside Canvas to create a quiz and you know how to, where to launch Cognero and you know a little bit on how to use Cognero. Um, you can play with it a lot more. Um, there are some buttons down here. I think there's some shortcuts to um, toggling the problems, toggling the answers, things like that. Um, but for the most part, it's a lot like test gen. Um, it just took me some, a uh, little bit of getting used to, to figure out how to add problems from previous tests that I've already created. But other than that, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm going to stop recording. You guys have a great day.